Yeah, we back, we back, we back, man. This is Rackers and Friend Podcast, man. Tenemos a nuestro big bro. Yeah, I mean, Dan Trump. Dan yes, Trump. Yes, yes, yes. What's good with you, brother? How you man, been? Man, it's good to be reunited with my brothers, man. For sure, man. We've been all over the world together, man. Yeah. We rock Panama, Colombia, you know what I mean? All over the it. USA. Don't, don't just talk about the nice ones. Let's talk about them, the, 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 the dirty ones. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do <laughs> it, man. You hey, hey uh, Dame, so I remember um, we met like years ago, right? You were performing with somebody oh, else. Almost almost 11. 11? Like almost 11 years ago. 11 years ago, uh, then you start being a drummer for us. Mm-hmm. Um, Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Go gonna back. I, okay, that's all. Oh, yeah, 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 start when from I there. First, when I first saw y'all, I was like, yo, these dudes is fly, man. You know what I'm saying? I had, I had, I had never seen it like that. You know what I'm saying? I had never I had never been a part of, you know, I had never been in a room where Cats was like rapping in Spanish, man. You yeah, know what right I'm saying? Now. With a live band. Yeah, Because yeah. I had a band too that for night. For sure, for sure, for sure. And yeah. I had never seen that before, man. And, um... I just remember, like, like yeah, I had just got to the Bay. Right? Yep, yep. Like, maybe maybe two weeks before that. From Cleveland? Yeah, I had just got here. Right, 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 right. So it was good, man. It's good, me and y'all, man. Just... No, yeah, when we seen you, too, we, when we seen him rock, we were like, Yeah, because, hey, shout out to, you know, to the people that was there, but the drummer that was rocking with us wasn't on the level as, you know, that we needed it to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, people appreciated the show, but us, you know, being fucking, wanting to do the, the best that we can, we didn't feel like, but when we saw Dan, we were like, oh, yeah, that's what we need to be right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dude yeah. told me that years ago. He said, hey, man, we got to get a drummer like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what, I, that's what I said. I said, bro, we got to get a drummer like that, and then we link up. What, what, what was the first show we did? Oh man, it had to be like around um, two thousand, maybe fourteen or something like that. The mm -hmm. first, the first show we did, huh? I don't even remember. Was it? Was it like maybe like um, yeah, what's mean. that? What's that one joint down in um, uh, reggae by the? Was it reggae by the river or something like what is it? Reggae by the river. Was that the first one? Nah, I don't know. I don't even remember. It's been so long, bro. Yeah, it's so, it so long. It's so long. Hey, but you used to go by Dame the Drummer. Yeah. So now you go by Dame Drummer. Dame Drummer. Tell yeah. us that story, man. How did how, what, what what was this? Why you take out the the out of the well? The name? This was on the Rapture tour. You know, I was playing drums for um, Zion I, and you know, every night we had a a, a cipher on stage, which was lit. Zumbi was just that guy. He like, I'll hey, Zumbi. I'm a, uh, yeah, rest in peace to our brother Zumbi, man. He said, you know, Zumbi brought everybody that was on the tour on stage at night and just had everybody get off. Mm -hmm. And Zumbi was in his cadence and da 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 And then after we was out at dinner, yeah. And he said, hey, man, um, I understand everything about Brandon and everything, man. I, I said, Dame Drummer tonight, man. You know, I know it's Dame the Drummer, but blood, man, you know, I'm sorry, man. And then Doom was like, hey, man, I think you should go with that, man. And then Zumi was like, yeah, it sound pretty cool, man. And everybody was like, yeah, it sound pretty cool. And then when we came off that tour, I was Dame Drummer. <laughs> yeah. So Nosotros exactly. siempre le ponemos sobre el nombre a la gente. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, lo, lo bautizamos con el Dame Drummer. Yep, yep. You know, the, the Raka Baptism. You know, the cariño, you know, once we, you know, we uh, build a brotherhood, uh, we give our people nicknames. Yeah. You know, the Raka nicknames. And sometimes they be want to give them their own nickname, like, nah, call me this. And we be like, nah, 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 that's not your name, dog. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is your name, dog. That's it. <laughs> you got to run with it. I now, got, hey. I got to keep my name, though. That's what's fly. I love it. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> hey, so, bro. Like a dame. So, how tall are you, bro? Six, eight. Six, eight. Six, eight. Six, nine, when I stand up straight, when I use my grandma posture, she say, boy, stand up straight. Yeah. Like six, nine, but it is six, eight, though. Man, so that's has that been an advantage as a drummer? I don't know, man. Um, I think it's I think it's an advantage, man, when we playing shows, you know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. I'm walking around and I'm standing up, you know what I'm saying? People see us I, I think I think it's cool to have a big drummer, you know what I'm saying? It's just another vantage point for for the fans to look at. The whole know? presentation. You have with the whole presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm I saying? I remember I remember one time we was on tour too and then uh 
I was balling on you, bro. You remember that? <laughs> when no, when he said no, when, 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 when. we was Hold playing on, basketball. I don't know where we was on tour, but bro, I got pictures and everything. Bro, I got receipts. I need to you see them. Receipts? Yeah, like yeah, I, I was hitting them. threes over this six eighter, this six niner. I kind of, I kind of remember, foot, I kind of remember some hooping going on. <laughs> I just don't remember the version Rico talking about. <laughs> you know, he's a whole nother foot. He's a foot taller than me, and I was still balling on him. Put some respect on my name. So you, you used to hoop back in the days? I did, though. I did. I used to hoop back in the day, man. You know, I at, at one point, man, I was really trying to push the issue on the league, man. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it's a little political. I wasn't making enough noise, but I did make enough noise to go overseas and play in France, man. I played mm -hmm. in France, and... I touched the uh played some ball in Belgium, man. I got a chance to see a lot of Eastern Europe, man, through through basketball, you know, open some doors for me. How was that experience, man? Man, it was fly, man. Um, actually like uh I met a lot of really cool people, man. I met uh Udonis Haslam, man. Shout out to U D who's still playing, you know what I'm saying, for the Miami Heat. But right. you know, he Legend. was one of he was one of my partners over there, man, and I, you know, I got a chance to meet him and and, but the the interesting thing about the, my whole basketball experience is as even though I was playing ball and doing numbers, uh -huh. like my passion was music. Okay, so okay, I was okay, making okay, music okay. over there, performing for them. That's crazy. You feel what I'm saying? Like, hey, y'all, check this out, because we would meet up on Sundays at somebody's house, one of the Americans' house, and we we meet up on Sundays, all the Americans that play for different teams, and we we had dinner. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just knew, do what we do, because them guys had wives and kids over there, so we would just have big family time. And I come out with my laptop, man. You know what I'm saying? Just doing Start singing and stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, so. I remember that one song that um, cause you you put out a project that yeah. was pretty fire. I remember. Yeah, man. Um, I love them. Yeah, yeah. You want to give them a preview, bro? What's that song that I like, man? I think it was like the um, uh, burn. It's like something about burning. Oh, burn it all down. Yeah, yeah. that's ill, bro. Maybe you think it's funny. Tell me how much money do they pay you to kill me? Babylon's clock is ticking. Once this curse is lifted, we gon' burn it all down, down, down. Burn it all down, yeah. Yeah, 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 down, yeah, yeah. <laughs> down. That's what's up. <laughs> hey, so when when you made the transition from balling to to like to music? It was always there, man. It was like I just kind of like I released I released balling like around. I would say I let it go completely like around oh seven to eight. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I met a girl. You know what I mean? And yeah. I ended up getting married, man. And and once I met her, basically, you know, I just was like, man, you know, she was younger than me and had you know her own dreams. So I was like, man. I could go still get this bag over here, man. You know what I'm saying? I was like, but, you know, I'm going to shut it down, man, and just settle down. Yeah. Because I was kind of living recklessly, man, while I was over there, too. For me. sure. So for I was sure. like, you know, I mean, just chill out, man. So living the rock star alive. life, huh? Yeah, it's different. Living the man. rock star life. It's different until the soccer players walk up in the club. Oh, man, then they're, they're, they're a regular, real rock star. Yeah, then you just a regular dude. <laughs> <laughs> just regular. You regular until they boys walk up in there, catch from Marseille and all that. You feel me? Hell yeah. yeah. Get wild. Hell yeah. yeah. So uh, the music game, man, um, you've been doing that for a while. Because when I met you, you know, I, I, I just knew you as the drummer. But then once you start playing me the... Uh, the music you were making, I'm like, oh shit, mm. this is fire. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh man, Dame is actually doing something different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think just people need to come uh, tap in and really listen. Yep. If they get, you know what I mean? Because you brand new to a lot of people, so it's like you just got to give it a chance, you know? Because I like it. You know, it's different. You the message that you're sending, mm. and you're saying something different. I said that like three or four, five times, but no, 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 no. But it's, it's real though. It's mm. important to hone in that part, man, because a lot of people scared of different. They just gonna follow the trend until somebody stamp it. Yeah. Like, yo, this the new thing. But it's like, I feel like, man, when you listen to my music, I feel like you gonna, you ain't even gonna really even wanna vibe with the trend no more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're gonna be like, ah, it's that's all way. they doing over there. That's all they doing. Cause I'm hitting you with many styles. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I don't have just one sound. It's like. I got a lot of stuff. If I just played it, you just keep asking. You you did that? 
Oh, you did that one too? You, I'm like, yeah, I did all that. So that's just where I'm coming from. Yeah. Musically. It gives me like a, let me say, like an NWA soulful vibe. Mm, that's crazy. My God. That's a that's a dope that's a dope wow. combination right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, because NWA is man that's embedded in my DNA, man. That was some revolutionary music when it came out. They were so unafraid, bro. Yeah, and that's what I learned from them. Like in, in my music, I learned to never be afraid. Like through their music, bro. Like for real, they wasn't scared of nothing, bro. And when they came out with like FTP, man, I was like. They really said that, so you, cause you know, you know. Back in the days too, it was crazy to say something like that, huh? Yeah, that's what I mean. Literally, that's why I had the boldness to, you know, I got that one song. And the first line is, "I want to see a white man hang from a tree." I'm like, What's that? Sing it again. I want to see the white man hang from a tree. Mm. Eyes bold and red while he's staring me, and I'm like, I want to see his children work for me. I ain't paying them shit; they gonna work for free. I'm like, I'm coming with it, bro. I'm like, don't stop it. Don't stop it. yourself. Hey, yeah. man, tell us, tell us about the, the movie, man. Oh. Like, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, you, before we get into that, uh -huh. like, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what I like about it. You know, because at the end of the day, it's entertainment, right? Yeah. And it's like, wow, somebody finally said something different, mm. right? Somebody had the balls to say that. Mm -hmm. What is, how you saying it? It's actually... It's groovy. It got a little groove to it too. Yeah. Like it make you want to like, nod your head and you know what yeah. I mean. Slap. You know, even yeah. if you are a white person, it doesn't matter. It just Don't feels the, the song just just sounds good. You yeah. know what I mean. And it ain't coming across as like angry black man. You know what I'm saying? We like we used to that angry black people yeah. music. It's like the revolution music. It's like no. Nah, it's like I'm finna I'm finna woo you in to this one, and, and you gonna feel it. It no matter who you are. Like. Of course, man. I, I done had death threats from the song, bro. You know what I'm saying? I done had people all in their feelings. But I think that the people who conscious and who got a, a real sense of of, of uh, awareness, they really understand that the words supersede that. It can mean anything. It's like the song is get what you gave. So it's like doom. Like mm -hmm. if I was going to get what I gave, mm -hmm. how would I treat you? You feel what I'm saying? How would I treat you, Rick? How would I treat a lady that I'm with? Or how would I treat my kids if I was going to get everything that I gave. So if it was negative, it's going to come back. Definitely. Would you do it? Oh, so there's a message behind that song. Hell yeah, It's not bro. just like you're just you saying it to provoke violence or anything like that. It's just more, nah. it's a message behind the song. No, nah, because you know what I'm saying, vengeance is vengeance is the Lord, so I ain't trying, I ain't worried about that. It ain't about being violent. They're going mm. to they get it back anyway. You feel what I'm saying? But the message is, it, it's like, it's a lesson in critical race theory. Don't get me wrong. Like it's like, yo, y'all gonna keep running up this tab, or is y'all gonna act? Is y'all gonna behave different towards yeah. the people? Yeah. But then it supersedes that by just saying like, yo, we could do better towards each other. Just think about it. If you was gonna get everything that you gave, how would you treat X, Y, Z? How would you behave? Right. Simple. It's, it's simple. a simple message. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. dope. That's dope. You know what I mean? Hey, and then, so you just been working a lot. Huh? You just been doing your thing. You know what I mean? Because you told me, man, Rico, I'm about to go full into the music. And then all of a sudden, you was doing the music. But then now, you got a movie that came out. Yeah. And then, um, I, I think I seen it on the Instagram that you got some awards and all kind of stuff. Yes, sir. What, what's the name of the movie, bro? Black Daddy the Movie. Black Daddy, the movie, because it's like, um, you know, you've been a father for a while. Doom, you are newest father. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And it's like, once you get into fatherhood, it's really a little movie, bro. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? It's, it's exciting. It's, it's loving. It's frustrating. It's, it's so many different things, you know. It's a movie. And so I, um, anytime I do something, I always do a Google search to see if there's any name out there like that, because I had to do that with Dame Drummer, too. Uh-huh. I had to make sure there was nothing else that said Dame Drummer. So I looked, and I just typed in Black Daddy the movie. It was nothing there. So I immediately went and got the website, the IG, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, it's a movie. And then from there, um, I wanted to tell the stories and humanize black men because we dehumanize, bro. They only look at us on screen for one or two, three things. They look at us for entertainment through sports, through comedy, or entertainment through us being violent towards one each other, yeah. one another. That's it. And so I came out of a, a 
a situation. Like I said, I, I was married, man, and then and once that dissolved, you know, I was in a bad place, man. Mm-hmm. Bad place, and the only thing that got me through it, man, was my children, man. You know, God and and and, and brothers that was like, hey, man, we know you, bro. Like you a good dude, man. We we ain't gonna let you stay there. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. Brothers that got around me and loved me, and I said, man, ain't nothing wrong with this, bro. I said, so I'm gonna show this to the world, cause this is real. Like black men loving on each other, man. We need that, bro. That's what's up, man. So I wanted to show that and see, show what that looked like on screen. Invite the the world into the real black men and, and our and our processes and how we get along with each other. That's what's right. up. Right, and then so the children and then explain what's going on in the movie a little bit, you know. So we we dealing with like real stories, you know. We we a lot of times, man, we don't really get to talk about the things that are really passionate. You know, and that we really care about, like, which is really our families, man, and our yeah. children, man. We don't really get to talk about it. So I wanted to provide us with a voice to do that. And what I, what's going on in this film is I show I show men how to do that because a lot of us don't know how to do it. I rented an Airbnb, you know what I'm saying, had food up in there, no women allowed, just men. You know, got all the brothers to get permission, you know what I'm saying, to get away from their families for a little bit. And uh, we just broke bread, man, and, and opened up. Started, you know, just talking. You know, we had some topics that we opened up, like, man, what is it like? What's your day to day like, man? You know, and you know, we just ended up talking, man, and just really building. And then, um, you know, the children really didn't have much of a role in the film. I think, um, I think you see me with my kids a little bit in there, but I just really wanted brothers to know that, man, you good. We we talk about the courts, cause a lot of brothers going through that court system, man, to see their kids, and it's terrible. You know what I'm saying? We got to do better as a community with that, man. We got to stop. We got to get out them folks' business in the courts and try to handle this on our own. We talk about fathers that's incarcerated. You know what I'm saying? We talk about the absence of fathers. We talk about the presence of fathers. We just really touch in all the subjects that we know we're going through and really, you know, really open that up to people. And then when it's all said and done, when we do Black Daddy the Experience, when we do the act the live music into it, man, people be ready to talk and open up, man. I had women coming up to me, man, crying at the uh, some of these film festivals I've been at, man, because they realized they was out of pocket, man, in a lot of areas. So it's about accountability. It's about a lot of things that we got to deal with. Man, so you got some awards for that, huh? Over over thirty, bro. Over thirty, over 30 awards. awards. Over thirty awards, man. I got um I got awards for uh appreciate that. Awards for uh, Best Debut Filmmaker, uh, Best uh, Score, um, Best Documentary, Best Feature Film. I won this award in Miami at the Urban Film Festival called the Purpose Driven Content Award because it's just, it's purposeful, man. It's for the community. So they gave me that award. It was the first time that they had ever given the award, and they gave it to me, man. So it's doing work, man. You know, it really ain't my movie, man. It's our movie. You know what I'm saying? Why could people go check it out, bro? They can go watch it on... um, Vimeo On Demand. Vimeo On Demand, and you type in Black Daddy The Movie or Dame Drummer, D-A-M-E-D-R-U-M-M-E-R, man, and it'll be there. But it's it's set to come out on uh, Tubi at the end of the month. That's cool. Hey, congratulations, man. man. My brother get in that guap. My <laughs> nigga get in that <laughs> money, okay? Tubi money, man. Come on, I don't, I don't yeah. know about that yet, man. We ain't, we, ain't, we ain't seen a check. All I've been doing is handing out checks, man. You know what I'm oh, God, you've been doing it investing, independently. Investing. Man. Oh, so you've been doing this independently? All independent. Oh, okay. Totally. Tell the people, man, what you, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you had to do to make this possible, you know? Man, you grind, man. You know what I'm saying? When they, they you heard, if you ever heard the term "all money out," you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Nipsey all was all money in. Yeah, yeah. Nipsey, Nipsey was, Nipsey all, was money all money in. in. <laughs> when you an independent artist, it's all money <laughs> out, man. <laughs> it's all money out, and you hope you see a payday, man. But literally, man, I, I get up, I go to work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and I feed my art until it's gonna, until it feed until it's gonna feed me. You know what I'm saying? That's what's got up, to. man. What you got good coming up next, man? Uh, hey man, um, going down to uh, L.A. February fifth, mm-hmm. man. Got nominated for a Grammy with Alphabet Rockets for Ooh. my production. Ooh. You feel what I'm saying? Congratulations! I just want to be like y'all, man. I just want to be <laughs> Grammy now, man. Hated. Congratulations, Philly, my you brother. Feel me? Yeah, man. So, um, yeah. After that, and then we got um, we got two albums coming out this this year. Black Daddy, the sound. You know what what being a Black Daddy sound like. You know, in this in this featuring um, 
um, Grand National, Korea Bailey, uh, KF Choice, and then um, and then I I wrote all the music for it and everything like that, man. That's what's up. I didn't hear Los Rakas so, name in there though. Los Los Rakas and some Black Daddies. Man, Los Rakas. Maybe for the next one, man. <laughs> God. Nah, but it's all love. Uh, Dame, uh, we're gonna be on tour soon. Yeah. So if you guys, you know, you got some uh, some space for it, for us in your schedule, because I know you're a busy man. Let's go rock the world again. Oh busy. man, hey, man say that, busy, bro. Man. Let's do it, if man. Y'all, if Don't forget y'all, about us, bro. Nah, if y'all have me, man, we get back out there, man. Shake it up, man. You Let's know what I'm saying. It. Let's Thank you it. for coming, man. You're so, our bro. first guest, first guest, and I'm the Rocket Podcast, man. Oh, man. Hey, man! Round of applause for Dame Drummer. Yeah, let's go. Give it up.